everything's still intact. What is your, what are your thoughts on, on this, and I'm, I'm, the, we're pretty the happy life with of how it. it? Turned out. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think we tried to make it, you know, the original idea to form kind of this frame to prop up the bamboo. We were going to make that out of bamboo mm -hmm. as well. But then once we got down here, we, you know, there's this abundance of stone. And, and then thinking about when it does flood, um, you know, because I've did a lot of outdoor work in floodplains before. Mm -hmm. So it's always fun to maybe, um, you know, create something that will be left behind mm -hmm. after the flood. So it'll be, you know, for you, it'll be right. great. Maybe you can send me some pics. So when this area does flood and all the bamboo bamboo floats, floats away, away to wherever, the Gulf of Mexico, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, you should still be left with this large thing. stone in the middle and then this little stone wall, yeah. this stone wall around Neat. it. Yeah, so I love it. So it'll be it. interesting to see how it trans... That's one of my favorite things about making outdoor work, actually, mm -hmm. is seeing how it transforms over mm -hmm. time. So what do, you, what do you think your estimate is based off of what I've shared as far as our weather patterns? I think that it might be till next spring. I think you're right. Okay. Yeah, you would know. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I don't, do you get much high flooding? And probably not in the middle of the summer, but no. in the fall? Not really. Not really. And then it, it might, I think it is, I'm hoping that it stays until the spring because then I could get it pictures if it snows. Yeah. You know, I think that would be really yeah, cool. Be great. Um, or if like slightly um, gets moved. The other thing is, I'm glad you did it here and not way over there because that's definitely going to get more water table changing. And then also right. that's more public people, a lot more traffic over there. And just like I was telling you, Alex's work was up less than a week and someone took one of the letters off. And um, it took a letter off and then spelled something slightly vulgar, oh. <laughs> which I didn't, you know, and he, he, I texted him. He's like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> so I'm glad that this is slightly off so that people aren't messing around with it. You know, yeah. um, I'm not sure if people, I mean, one of my goals is to, this is, this has been a dream. This is a dream come true to, tell, right. to be honest <laughs> with you. Like six years ago, I'm like, I want to do this. And then when I saw found the land, I just had this vision of art installations and space using natural objects. I'm totally, you know, yeah. Andy Goldsworthy, yeah. kind of the video, the movie I showed my, I would show my intro to design students oh, yeah. a lot because yeah. of how he uses color, but also just the patience, right? And the right. ephemeral quality of something <laughs> and trying to get students to not be so attached to their design work. You know, right. that the wind comes and blows something away and how, how does that relate to like design and how much energy are you spending yeah. on like one little thing, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you shouldn't be spending that much time on, on something that's just for like a random, you know, small yeah. task. Right. So, um, well, and it's nice that I like students get them to think about, you know, when you encounter obstacles or problems like that, you could think of it as disastrous or yeah. you could think of it as an opportunity. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So. I would torture them in intro class <laughs> with that film. <laughs> is, it, is that Rivers and Tides? Do yeah, with yeah. R Rivers and Tides. So um, I like that this is kind of an unexpected um, thing that maybe only people who are coming into this land will see rather than, um, you know, a pure public thing. I'm just, right. yeah. I don't know if people in this area have been exposed to public art much right. Right? right and know what it is or understands it or or would you know respect it enough or are the kids gonna like if someone had their kids and they they're just like running and all of a sudden they jump on it right. or something you know <laughs> um so yeah i think coming down here i might even put up um a game camera at some point oh. which might be yeah. interesting just to see if there's animals or yeah. something walking around it that see, would be really cool Need to make sure this looks like it might be a poisonous vine, so I have to cut that down. Yeah, it's like a three leaf. Huh? Yeah. yeah Anything three with three leaves yeah. always makes me nervous. Exactly. This I think that's po that's poison a poisonous oak. oak yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and I think if I wear gloves and cut it, cut it down. Yes. It will stop growing on the tree. It's yeah. pretty high up there. Um, anyway. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So, we, we also chose this because we just thought if there are vehicles that yes. come down here, that's what we wanted. So I, hopefully there's still enough room that you could pull all the way around. Yeah, there and is. Drive without disrupting anything. But. I'm I'm usually one of the only people driving down here unless someone has a truck or something. Um, so I think it's pretty apparent when you come that you need to drive around it. So I think that's great. Um, it's just a, with my forest walks, it's just a really lovely little spot to unexpected, yeah. you know, yeah. um, for people. So I just, I'm super happy. Just delighted that you're here and doing the work. That's really great. Um, but you've done a lot of, have you done this type of structure with bamboo or? I've never worked with bamboo before. That's why okay. I was like, so I told Sarah, I said, we got to jump at this because yeah, yeah I've never had the opportunity. Great. Before, so. And what do you think about it because of the lightness of it, but yet the structure of well, it, can, right? Yeah, you can see why it's so popular, mm -hmm. you know, and where where it is abundant, why they use it so much. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's lightweight, it's hollow, but it's really strong, mm -hmm. flexible. Mm -hmm. You know, even Sarah took a piece, and it was a pretty, you know, pretty dried out piece, <coughs> and bent it into like a circle. Mm. And even she was surprised that it didn't break. Yeah, so the flexibility of it. And then you, your preparation for this was you chopped some things down that were kind of already dead in the, yep. in the forest. And then yeah, we probably took maybe 20 pieces out of the bamboo okay. forest and then used some of the stuff that you had. We kind of separated it into three piles based on length mm -hmm. and started with the longer stuff, the longer, thicker stuff. Great. The thicker stuff was usually the longer uh -huh. pieces. And was there any anything beyond just kind of sensibility of like the scale of the circle? No, I think a lot of that was kind of intuitive. Mm -hmm. But you know, like I said, we originally we we're gonna kind of make a frame with some you know natural twine mm -hmm. to sort of hold these uh, <coughs> these pieces of bamboo up. But then once we got down here and thought of the rock and thinking that this is likely to flood um there's some really there's a lot of great rock around here that's really flat yeah <clears throat> and i see you know just kind of driving in the region i see there's a lot of rock walls yeah too, that have been made out of these flat yeah. stones i'm obsessed with flat rocks <laughs> yeah. right now i've been collecting small ones <laughs> and then after we had a big rain about a month ago uh i came down here and there were a ton of bigger ones exposed right. i'm like oh my gosh i gotta collect these i feel like i'm turning into like a little dragon with my <laughs> with my like my precious stones or something um and then where did you find this guy <coughs> the bigger one at the top oh yeah, i carried did it you carry yeah. that all the way down wow that's really awesome <laughs> yeah there was a little bit smaller one that uh -huh. i originally liked but um i thought this this the size you know i knew knew the size needed to be reasonably significant yeah certain and a certain dimension and shape yeah that's really great yeah great yeah so when i come down here i'll i'll photograph it and do some of those little like basic maintenance things on yeah. it and then we'll we'll track it for um <coughs> for the seasons and see what happens. I could also put a little, did you have, I think on your, I saw on your Instagram that you titled it. <coughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah, I don't got a tickle in my throat. Um, yeah, actually it's based off of. Maybe I'll put a little stand and make, put a title. Do you do that with your work sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. That's outdoor. That kind of gives a little bit more of an explanation. Let me see it. Yeah, we just called it Southern. Oh, <coughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Southern ter Terminus cool. Tupelo. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, I might just put um, like a little uh, tea post or something over there that kind yeah, of explains maybe. it. Or just gives it a name and put your name on it and the date and stuff. I think that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. River's pretty high right now. 
So yeah, this has been really nice to get back to this. That's awesome. And what did you find most different or appealing about being here than other places that you've worked? Um, I think, you know, just like having access to the bamboo mm -hmm. was, you know, because we like had conversations and really thought about, um, you know, how can we make sure that this is going to, you know, be reasonably visible. Mm -hmm. So I even, you know, wanted to test and see the color and the value of the bamboo against this rock. So that, mm -hmm. that's what was really appealing about here. And this is just such a, like a beautiful spot to work for a day yeah down here yeah i mean even listen to the the trees right now look at those yeah. the storm might be coming in again yeah yeah that's what i think the bamboo um works so much better here because if we had just taken you know like some of these branches from back here mm -hmm. they essentially have about the same value as this the surrounding stone right. so it just would you know that's one of the the, the, the issues that you run into with outdoor work sometimes is um, how do you, you know, it's nice to have it kind of blend into the landscape, but you also want it to be noticeable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think the materials were calling for you, and you even found some of the great ones with the little um, bends yeah, in I them. Like <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that you placed it right here, yeah, kind of as a pointer almost. Yeah. <laughs> Liam was helping me at the end, uh -huh. you know, once we had all the pieces cut, um, cause that's, that became my little workstation. I sat on that. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, and just cut the pieces to the lengths that we wanted. Okay. But yeah, he was helping me at the end, lay them. And he had a couple of those and he's like, um, should we put these ones on here? They're not straight. And I said, no, no, it'll look fine. Yeah. And yeah. How's that been having your family along on a it's trip been good. like this? Yeah, it's yeah. been really nice. And do yeah. they get a chance to see you work like this? Is this one of the first times yeah, they've had a chance yeah. to see you do something? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, you know, I think they've seen some of my projects after they're finished because we'll mm -hmm. take them just to go see them. But mm -hmm. I don't know if they've ever worked with me or, you know, seen me work through the process from conception to final realization yeah, yeah that's yeah. probably a first well that's been really nice they look like they're budding artists themselves yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's it's interesting you know sarah and i talk about this and we even talk to them about it you know it's not something we don't think of ourselves as really kind of pushing it on mm -hmm, them mm -hmm. but you know as artists we just we have the materials just readily available mm -hmm. and they're there and you know so and we talk about, you know, like these are good, but to, you know, so we've just these, you know, sort of funny moments like where Stella will go to a friend's house and, you know, come back and she'll say, we're like, how, you know, did you have fun with your friend? She said, yeah, it was great. What'd you do? Oh, we did some painting, but they didn't even have watercolor paper. You know, like they were like, well, most people don't, you know, if they're a non-artist family, they probably don't. <laughs> that's great that's great so that's just kind of the watching and learning and the yeah. intuitive that nature nurture kind of yeah. question yeah, right they're kind of, you know they're they're a little bit you know slightly resentful because you know people will find out that we're art professors and then you know their teachers will go you say like well you must be good at art you know your parents do it uh-huh you know so so there's like an expectation yeah, placed sort of upon like, them I don't want, yeah I want, yeah and we're like well you don't have to do art yeah. And if you don't want to, that's fine. Yeah. Well, that was an interesting story of yeah. raising family and just the time we live in, too, yeah. right? Yeah. It's great. I love that the little, um, these these things are called usneas, this little guy. Oh, yeah. And they're, this they're stuff? yeah. Oh, that's interesting. They, um, you know what we call this in Canada? In the, because I grew up in like foothills of the Rocky Mountains. We call this old man's beard. Oh, yeah. And it's great for starting fires. I think fires. I might actually have that as a, as a nickname. Yeah. Basically, these will, it's a, it's even like a medicinal thing. So they grow, you know, they attach to the, the wood, right? Yeah. The trees, only where there's really clean air, right? Hmm. So you know that it's just, a really fresh place to be right wherever you find these right. things right and i just love how like floppy and fluffy right. they are and you'll come down here and you know a branch will fall or like this little guy's fallen so it'll be interesting to see over time like there's bugs on there yeah. right now like what comes down here so 
uh, it's it's nice because it's giving me a purpose to come down here more often right. um, and take a break from kind of normal life or my normal life, not normal life, but um, and just see kind of what's happened to it and, you know, if an animal. Um, and then, like I said, I'll put up a little game camera yeah. and just like examine it over time if I know that there's maybe like a crazy storm or something coming. Do um, we notice the ants really... Uh, gravitate to the bamboo even when we made those bundles and left mm -hmm. we left them just on the ground hmm. up by the camp they overnight. love crawling on it yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a little guy right yeah. there yeah Where'd just leaving it on the ground like the one bundle was completely infested really it's just overnight wow <laughs> so they got relocated <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i think it's just a really i agree i love the way that the color works and the contrast works um and the even the way you're using line and shape mm -hmm. in it right um and the unexpected squiggly one um yeah it's just a it's one of those pieces that you're like huh that's nice i it's, could just sit here for a while yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because the original drawing for this mm -hmm. um I was kind of, you know, just on before we got here, I was kind of just trying to brainstorm a little bit before, you know, reacted to the landscape. Um, just, you know, I always like to maybe have some possible ideas mm -hmm. ready. So as look, you know, looking at old sketchbook, you know, old ideas, and especially during it, when I was doing a lot more of this stuff, and I had I had a sketch where I'll have to send you a picture of the okay. original sketch is from. It's probably from about like 18 years ago. Wow. Yeah. And I've never, never realized it until now. So I had an idea for, uh -huh. and it was similar. It wasn't quite exactly like this. Uh -huh. but yeah. Wow. That's so, incredible. Yeah. I kind of like that. I'm like, wow. Just, yeah. Yeah. It, 18, yeah, it was probably in about, yeah, 2003. Wow. I think when I made that initial drawing. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that's amazing. And thanks for coming. I just yeah. been I know that it's only been a short time for you guys, but I just love seeing your work and Sarah and meeting the kids and it's just yeah. been really great. Yeah, so thank you. It's been really great. I hope you can come back again well. sometime and yeah. I'll keep in touch and post photos and send for them sure. to you. Yeah. You know, Pacific Northwest kind of place to me. But nobody's really ever tried to you know, put their finger on what a what would a philosophy of the prairie be? Um, from an art artistic perspective or just in I general? Thank you, general. Yeah, yeah. Like how, have, you know, so yeah, the ongoing project is just collecting people that have um, made art, mm -hmm. written, mm -hmm. um, you know, some kind of response or insight to life and right. Culture on the and I think so, that you even wrote about Lucy Lepard's book in your in yeah, your yeah, statement, we're, right? We're I love her yeah. book, Clear yeah. the Local. So that makes sense that that's something that you're yeah. interested in. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. There, that's part of our proposal that they were kind of interested in. So oh, nice, nice. Yeah. And then doing some mate place based making. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Well, I discovered Lucy Lepard's book when I was in grad school, and that's yeah. kind of framed that's, my yeah, whole life, you know, too. since then. So um, when I read that in your um, in your statement, I was like, oh, I have to meet Greg. Yeah, I love her. Yeah, <laughs> have, I think her have you had a chance and, to meet like, her in Rebe person? You know, Rebecca Solnit. I uh, might because I'm reading a book called Wanderlust right now. Oh yeah, that's by Rebecca okay. Solnit. Yeah. yeah, that's a great book. Yeah. yeah, and she talks in the in the beginning about taking a walk with with Lucy and how Lucy was like, "You need to write a book about walking." Right. And she's like, "What?" Yeah. There's another great one that's kind of like Wanderlust because um, I in one of my books I did a whole chapter about walking. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one called the uh, The Philosophy of Walking by Frederick Gross, okay. which is really a great companion to the Rebecca Solnit book. Okay. But she's great. I love. She's a great uh, like Instagram follower. Like she's okay. a, such an activist. And, really, I'll yeah. have to check it out. Yeah. She's really good. Someone else turned me on to a book. This uh, another resident. Uh, it's called On Trails. And it's about, on it's, it's about trails. Oh. It's, so like it talks about ants and trails and people oh, and trails and all sorts of trails, um, which is really interesting. So that's one I'm listening to at the moment. Um, but all of these things, I think, connect in an interesting way. And trails, the author of that book 
was started out kind of like I walk a lot, you know, like walking, but he was interested in like how trails form. Yeah. And like even, um, you know, looking at like a college campus where they put the structure of a sidewalk, but yet people will divert and right. go across, right? The, yeah. the most traveled and how he did an experiment with ants where he like drew the trail, right? And as, as like the, the more and more ants, they started following right. the other, <laughs> like he would clean the, tr he would clean it up, like, yeah. He would like clean the surface or something so they couldn't follow each other's scents. But over time, they all started walking on the same trail, right? right? So that becomes like um, a pattern. And so it's a lot about patterns and, and yeah, I think that you would like that one. Yeah. Yeah. It cool. reminds me of that. I love that part, the Robert Irwin. Um, okay. You know, the art. He got, it was some school in California, they asked him and they said, we want you to do like a site specific sculpture on our campus or whatever. Uh -huh. So he came and he kind of hung out for a few days and just observed. And he saw all those, you know, shortcut trails yeah. that were like, you know, where the grass was dead, but the students were, and his idea, he was like, let's like make these into trails. Yeah. Like, let's, so they made them, some of them were stone and concrete. And he was like, why don't you know, why don't we formalize them as actual walking ways? Wow. Yeah. And what was his name? Robert Irwin. Irwin. He's a, okay. Yeah. He's not really known for that kind of stuff, okay. but, um, but it, I thought that was a neat project. Yeah. I'll have to look yeah, at that. Yeah. We did in undergrad. I did this. It's interesting. Like just thinking of the ends, how, because we did this project, um, where like on the college campus that I was at, you know, there's these walkways and I, it was a collaborative piece with a couple of other students. So we took just like these little stank, these little st stakes with um, like neon tape kind mm -hmm, of. Mm -hmm. And we had the sidewalk and then we made this little divergent path that went off and kind of in a loop and then came back to the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And what happened, everyone went on the, but so there was, and it was only like, it was only this high off the ground. Uh -huh. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with the sidewalk in front of them. But nearly everyone took this path. Detour. With, yeah, without even thinking about, like, why am I doing this or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was really interesting. That <laughs> is interesting. Like, and then they follow each the other, path. too, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, they see yeah. everyone else doing it. Yeah. 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 So the On Trails book would really yeah. resonate with you a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's really great. Well, hopefully this place will start to slowly transform. I mean, it's not intentional necessarily, right? Yeah. It's not like I'm out here with bulldozers. It's right. more of... How are people using the space? I'm seeing a crazy vine right now. Um, and, you know, kind of caretaking it and letting yeah. artists come in and kind of seeing it. And, you know, yeah. like this space happened to be. If you had been here a few months ago, that wouldn't, it right. would look different down right. here. Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that's really fascinating as well. Yeah, it's beautiful.